Welcome to the titling segment of the After Effects Basic Training Series. All right, this is where we create cool looking text, or we try to. Well, the main thing we're gonna take a look at is the text tool. Here it is in its glory. When you click on the text tool, you usually get the character and paragraph options. If not, here's the context box that brings those up. Usually, you have a little bit more space to work with, but uh, we'll do our best. What I'm gonna do is take the text tool, and I've created a blank composition, and I'm gonna click right into the comp, and I'm gonna type After Effects. Then I can go back to my arrow tool, and I'll center this up. We can also bring up the title safe, and that way we can kind of find the center. Hide that. Okay, I'm gonna make some more room for the character palette. Now, we have our font. The great thing about the font is you can use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through it. And if you use the arrow key and you select the text layer, you can kind of switch through it and you don't have to have the text selected. Now, once you find the font you're looking for, we have a few other options. We have the text size, text spacing, tracking, a stroke we can also apply to add a stroke or an outline to your text. Click on this back color, double click, and uh, you can just choose a color and I'll create a nice stroke there and you can change the size of it here how it looks whether it fills over the stroke and that way the uh, stroke is kind of behind your text um, let's try another color here now in CS3 you'll notice that the color picker updates in the viewport real time so that's kind of a nice feature right there okay so you can see that a little bit better there and there's also some other options here to stretch the text, etc. Now, below here, you're probably familiar with a lot of these from Photoshop. We have the Fox Bold, Fox Italicized, and Force Capitalization, and then we have sort of the caps with the staggered size. Now, we also have our paragraph options. So, when we play with our tracking, you may notice the tracking happens from the center when your text is centered. Now, if it's aligned to the left, the tracking will kind of go out in that direction. So just be aware that you may wanna change your paragraph options depending on what you're after. Now, After Effects comes with a lot of text presets. So what are text presets? Well, let's go to our Effects and Presets tab, and then we'll go down the Animation Presets, scroll down, Text, and then we can scroll that down. And there's a whole bunch of presets, like probably, let me see, I counted them the other day, there's like 80 billion. And what you can do is kind of go through it, pick one that you like, drag it out right onto your text, either in the composition or in the timeline. And wherever your current time indicator is, that's where the animation begins. Well, if you remember from an earlier tutorial, if you hit the letter U with the layer selected, you'll bring up all the keyframes for that animation. Then, if you hit U twice, you'll bring up all the animated properties or all of the changed properties. And you'll see a whole bunch of stuff in here and you can edit this, but the main thing is these offset keyframes. So I'm just gonna hit U once. So now I have the two keyframes for my offset. So this animation kind of animates out and that's what this uh, animation does. But I can simply take the first keyframe, drag it to the other side, and now I have an animate in. And I can drag both of these keyframes to the beginning, and so I can start my animation whenever I like. Now, if you don't like the animation, just hit undo, and you can remove it. Now, you can also go to this little arrow, and you're probably not gonna be able to see it, but if you go down to Browse Presets, which is about halfway down, It'll bring up Adobe Bridge, and you can then go into the presets for the animations of the text, double click, and then you can see all of the folders, and we can go to the organic ones. And what's nice is if you click on any one of these, you'll see a little animation up in the top here that'll kind of show you what that does. And I think if you're crafty enough, if you double click on it, it applies it to your actual layer. So and then we can go to our time controls, hit the RAM preview button. Now if anyone uses this preset, I will lose it. So anyway, that's kind of the basics of the text tool and the animation presets. Well, After Effects is capable 
of a lot more. And we're gonna go ahead and see what we can create using After Effects built-in tools. So I'm gonna create a new blank composition using these settings 10 seconds long and choose OK. So now I have a blank composition. What I have also in my project window is our After Effects basic training star. I'm gonna drag that out into the comp window. So this is just a star flattened in Photoshop without a black background. So the transparency is built in. Now I'm gonna take the text tool, click in the comp area, and I'm gonna type After Effects. Now it sort of kept my uh, effects from my previous text. Well, I'm gonna to go to my character palette and I'm gonna get rid of the stroke by clicking on this get rid of button here. And now I have just my text. And what I'll do is with that layer selected, I'll go ahead and scale it down a little bit. Then I'm gonna select the layer and duplicate it. So I can choose edit, duplicate. I can also hit control D. So pay attention to those shortcuts. So now there's two copies. Now I'm gonna go ahead and scale this second copy up a little bit. And I'm gonna type basic training. Now I do have the all caps button checked. I'm gonna go ahead and move these down a bit. Okay, so if I position these accordingly, I get sort of my logo from the basic training series. Now, all these layers can be animated together. By I can parent them together. For example, I could parent the text to the star, and then if I rotate the star layer, they'll all follow. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna pre-compose these layers. And what that means is basically nest them into a separate composition so that they all show up as one single layer. Let me show you. So I'm gonna select the first layer, hold down Shift, and select the last layer. Then I'm gonna choose Layer, Pre-Compose. And then it's gonna say Move All Attributes to New Comp, and we'll call this Logo, and choose OK. So as you can see, all of these layers are now represented by this one layer that I can now move around. Now, if I wanna get back inside and edit this or change the color or do whatever, Alt, double-click on it, or just double click on this pre-comp in the project window. A new comp window and timeline pops up and I can then edit it here. But for now, I'll go ahead and close that. So back to my main comp two. What I have created now is my logo. And now I wanna create a background. So I'm gonna choose layer, new, solid. And we're gonna make a black solid background. So I'm just gonna select black, choose okay and make comp size, choose OK. Then I'll take my black solid, move it to the background. Then I'm gonna add a gradient to the background. I'm gonna choose Effect, Generate, Ramp. Then I'm gonna change the ramp shape to Radial Ramp. Then with the ramp name selected, I'm gonna move this into the center and this point may be just right here. Now, I have two colors to choose from for this radial gradient ramp. Radial gradient ramp, wow, great. And I'm gonna set the internal color to a dark green, and I'm gonna set the end color to black. So I've created just sort of a nice gradient. Okay, that looks pretty good, but what if we wanted to add some 3D to our title? Well. We can take our logo comp and turn on the 3D layer switch. So now the layer's 3D. I can go to my rotation tool and rotate this in 3D space now. I don't want to yet, but I can. Now I'm gonna create a new 3D camera. So I'm gonna choose layer, new camera. And I'm gonna use the 50 millimeter preset. The 50 and 35 are usually good places to start. Then I'm gonna choose okay and nothing changes, but now I have a camera. And what the camera allows me to do is use these tools to fly around the scene. So if I take the orbit camera tool, I can click in the comp area and drag kind of in a circle and kind of fly around my text. So far, so good. Now I'm gonna create another new solid. So layer, new solid. 
and make comp size and choose OK. Then to this solid, I'm going to apply a 3D particle system. So I'm going to go to my effects and presets. I'm going to type in particle and particle world comes up and that's the one we want. So I'm going to drag that out to my new solid. Now I'm going to rename this solid by hitting return on the main keyboard and we're going to call it particles. Now I'm going to take a moment and give you kind of a brief overview of a particle system. So I'm going to solo the layer. Now a particle system is basically a system that generates, you know, particles, raindrops, snow, any kind of system that requires a lot of instances of something similar or, uh, you know, something that needs to interact together. So in this case, here's our particle system. It's like a huge fountain of golden lines. So not particularly useful yet, but it has potential. So I'm going to come over here to my effects controls, and if you're in 6.5 F3 brings that up. And for our grid, I'm going to set the floor to off. Let's go ahead and go through the settings. Now we have scrubbers. This is basically a way to navigate the particle system. No thank you. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off. Now we have birth rate. How many particles are born per second? Now these numbers are obscure. They don't really mean anything, but we can increase it and decrease it. Now next is longevity. So how long do the particles last? How long do they live? It's another way to think about it. You can extend that. I think this is seconds, but it may just be an obscure number. Now, next we have the producer. So producer can also be called emitter, depending on the particle system you're working with. And basically, this is the cannon, or what exactly is shooting out these particles. You can change the position. X, Y, Z there. You can also change the radius. In this case, it's a box. So if I were to increase the X, it would stretch it, the Y, stretch it up, and the Z, stretch it long ways. So kind of create this big box of particles. And that's actually what I want to do. But you can just make it a single point, you know, fly it around, do some Harry Potter stuff. I know you're dying to do that. Now, next we have physics. So that's gravity, velocity, resistance, thermal dynamics, all that good stuff. Basically we can change a few of these options. So we have explosive. So that's kind of the particles are shooting out from a single source. So if we were to kind of scrub through this, you kind of see the kind of flying outward. There's also an option, uh, you know, twirl. It kind of flies around crazily. And now we have the velocity. That's the speed of the particles. You set this to zero, and the particles will essentially stand still except for our gravity here. Now. You could use this to create a nice looking rain if you change the color. So there are possibilities with this one effect. Now the gravity, if you set that to zero, the particles will stay still. Now in this case, they're disappearing because the particle type, which is in the next segment, is based on particles that are actually moving. So a still particle does not exist. But we'll turn the gravity back on just so we can see them. I'm going to open up the particle type. And we can change that to any of these different things. Now, some of them make sense, a cube. Some of them don't. Some of them are useless. Um, but, you know, use what you can. There's a star one here. There's your Harry Potter. Um, I like to use the lens convex. Now, the lens convex is a bit limited, but I just like what it does. And the reason it's limited is because I can't change the color of the particle. What I have to do is change the layer color. So what I do is select the layer, choose layer solid settings, and I'll change this to like a light green and choose OK. So now my particles will render and you can see they're kind of falling. Now I'm going to shut the gravity off again and shut that to zero. And so only thing that's happening is the particles are being born and they're dying. So you kind of see they pop up and they disappear. So they're being born, they disappear. Now, in the particle type, we can change the texture. So if we were to use a textured disk, and we can use another layer as the reference for that particle. So maybe we had little smiley faces or something. I don't know why we would do that, but suppose uh, we did. You could change the texture. And in more advanced particle systems like Particular by Trapcode, 
you can actually have animated layers and do a lot of things in 3D with the particles. This system, very limited, but you know, you stretch out the possibility so that you can actually use it. But I digress. Birth size. How big are they when they're born? You know, death size. How small are they when they die? Um, usually have more options than this, but you know, like I said, this one's a bit limited. Just kind of read what it says and should make sense. And if all else fails, uh, you know, don't feel uh, scared to just play with that slider and see what it does. So in this case, here's the particles, and we can change some colors if we are using a different particle type. Um, but for now, that's kind of the uh, the gist of it. And the camera usually don't have a lot of options here, um, especially we want to use the comp camera. So see this little 3D box? That means this particle system will work in 3D space. So if I turn off the solo layer thing, go up here to my orbit camera tool, I can click and drag and check it out. 3D. That's an amazing thing there. Now, let's, uh, let's dress this up a little bit better here. I'm gonna go back into my particle type for my particle world effect. And I'm gonna shrink these particles down. I don't want them so large. And then I'm gonna add a glow to our particles. And to do that, take my arrow tool, and we're gonna choose effect, stylize, and glow. So default kinda adds a soft glow, but I wanna increase that intensity and then I want to bring the threshold down. And the threshold, the higher the threshold, or the brighter the pixel has to be in order for it to glow. So if you bring the threshold down, even the less bright pixels will actually emit and glow. And I can also change the glow to be based on the alpha channel, meaning glow around the outside or around the transparency of a layer. And sometimes this works a little bit better. Now, the composite original means, what do I do with what it looked like before. Here's what it looked like before. Well, I want to composite the original on top. And that way the glow kind of comes from behind the particle or the layer, depending on what you're working on. Now we go down here, the glow colors is set to AB colors, which is right here. That basically means you get to pick the color. So I'm going to change color B to green. And you can see now we have a nice glow. Um, I'm going to actually turn the intensity down a bit now that we have this set up using the alpha channel and maybe turn the threshold up a bit too. Okay, now here's our particles. Now they're rendering, a few anyway, are rendering over our text. Well, I'm going to move this below our logo and then I'm going to take our logo and I'm going to alt double click on it. I want to add a drop shadow to our text so that it stands out a little bit better. So alt double click on the logo and we can show the transparency. Select basic training, choose effect, perspective, drop shadow. And pretty uh, common settings here. Distance, you know, how far. I'm gonna set the distance to zero, the opacity of the shadow to 100. You can't see it because it's right behind it. And then softness up. Now if I wanna make it darker, I can just choose edit, duplicate, with this drop shadow selected, and when I do that, let's make two copies of the shadow, and that way it's just a little bit darker. And then what I'll do is hold down Shift and select both of these, choose Edit, Copy, select After Effects, the top layer, and choose Edit, Paste. So bam, all the same effects. We're set to go, I'll go ahead and close this, and now we're returning to our main comp, and we're looking pretty good here.